the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Of God. You see that now. The entire scope of not just salvation from sin, the healing, anything that is administered to man that provides relief is sponsored by the mercy of god so you can now understand why blind Bartimaeus did not say son of man heal me uh -uh. he said son of man thou son of david have mercy because what i am looking for is only activated in the presence of your mercy mercy compassionate treatment of those in distress refraining from harming or punishing offenders or they that are guilty the disposition to be forgiving the disposition to pity or to be kind and then finally showing care and providing relief all of these definitions is safe to call every one of these definitions an appropriate definition of mercy we see from all these definitions that there are two expressions of mercy number one the first expression deals with forgiveness or withholding punishment broadly speaking now that whenever we talk about mercy there are two main expressions with based on all these definitions number one is forgiveness or withholding punishment that is the first expression of mercy the second is alleviating pain alleviating distress providing relief from suffering please follow very carefully now we're building now that every time we're discussing the subject of mercy from a kingdom perspective there are two broad angles to it number one it has to do with forgiveness withholding punishment from he or them that are deserving of it the guilty and then number two alleviating pain distress and providing relief from suffering in the kingdom when we talk about mercy your mind must be able to see it from the lens of these two perspectives every time god administers mercy he's doing one of two things number one he is forgiving or withholding punishment from a people who are deserving of it or number two he is alleviating pain distress and providing relief from suffering are you learning why do you need to know this so that number one you will appreciate the concept of mercy then you will know how to receive the administration of that mercy in your life and then you will also know how to communicate mercy because if you know that mercy is two-dimensional it has to do with forgiveness and it has to do with relieving of pain and distress so when the bible says blessed are the merciful now you know what he's saying that blessed are those who are apt to forgive blessed are those who are, are very very insistent in withholding punishment from them that are deserving and then blessed are they that support the freedom of men from pain from relief that means the healing ministry is the ministry of mercy the evangelistic ministry is the ministry of mercy blessed are the merciful we we'll leave that for tomorrow but just for you to really be able to understand so that it does not become an abstract concept 
mercy goes beyond pardon from sin pardon from sin is wonderful but even in the faith you will still need to operate by that understanding of mercy mercy is not just for sinners it is the basis for doing business with god in this kingdom are we together now yeah write this down please the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion that means it is impossible to administer mercy mercy is the fruit of compassion the foundation and the basis for mercy is compassion love what is compassion sympathy pity concern for the sufferings or the misfortune of others it is impossible to administer mercy until you have compassion now listen very carefully compassion has to do with feelings mercy has to do with action you see that when compassion is emotion it is no longer called compassion it is called mercy mercy is the fruit of compassion hmm. when it has to do with mercy the bible uses the expression show mercy or have mercy it does not say think mercy it does not say feel mercy because mercy is always action thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time thou son of david have mercy on me are we learning so the foundation for mercy is compassion love it is impossible to be able to administer mercy except you have love the reason why god is merciful is because god is love the reason why man can be merciful is because man is also a a recipient of that love nature and if allowed to be activated through faith then you can also be an administrator of mercy so why are we bankrupt of mercy in our world today from a standpoint of men to men the simple reason is because we do not dwell in love let me define for you let me give you my definition of love I've studied a bit on the subject of love believe me and here is my conclusion love is the absence of self that is it you can literally gauge love to the degree to which self is not there and you can gauge lack of love you can use the index of self as the ultimate test love is the absence of self more than a feeling more than the emotional construct of your heart you can know whether love is present in a place by checking whether self is there love and self is like light and darkness the moment there is self there cannot be love god's love so true love is the absence of self in fact listen the nature of love mandates that you cannot find fulfillment until you communicate that love to an object outside of you the very character of true love mandates that you cannot derive satisfaction in just loving yourself you must communicate that love to an object outside you to be satisfied that is why naturally speaking the character of love is that it gives for god so loved the world that he forget about what he gave just know that he gave so anything you so love you must give to it 
if you so love a vision you give to it your time your intelligence if you so love god you give to it if you so love your spouse you give giving when giving is absent there is no love god so loved the world that he gave he gave many things ultimately his son he gave us his spirit he gave us his life he gave us access to every spiritual blessing that resides in the heavenly places the bible says god so loved that he gave mercy is a fruit of compassion so the real prayer is not make me merciful uh -uh. the real prayer is that the love of jesus and his compassion will grow that we will grow in love because when you grow in love truthfully it will become natural to communicate mercy are we together yes most times you would see in jesus's healing meetings the bible would say he was moved with compassion not moved with power he was moved with compassion he looked at the people and saw them like sheep without a shepherd jesus wept twice in the bible one of it was at the tomb of lazarus the other was when he looked at jerusalem the bible says he wept over them and said jerusalem jerusalem if you had known even in this your time the things that pertain for your peace but now they are hid from you praise the name of the lord the foundation for biblical mercy is compassion did i define compassion the bible defines it and here's my definition of compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity is called compassion the ability say for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity it is the reason why even when jesus was done the work of salvation was over he still went to heaven as a man and he sat down there and continued a ministry of intercession not for himself for the saints because the character of love is that it finds satisfaction bringing joy to an object outside of itself he's seated at the right hand of the father and he makes intercession do you know how his intercession is sponsored by his compassion more than his power that means he looks at the father and says father if i did not become a man it would be easy for me to blame these people but i i am a man i know what it means to be hated for a right cause that is the basis of his intercession he has been there he was hated for no cause he blessed people and they said crucify him they ate of his bread adds the fish and they still said crucify him so when he sees someone who is loved for serving god and persecuted in a family his intercessory ministry is based on the fact that there is a point of contact can you can i tell you this one of the ways that god makes great people is to allow them go through several things that connect them with the feelings of the people they will be helping in future so that when you stand before people he may not necessarily cause the tragedies but in his wisdom he can walk out a way so when you are a great person either as a leader a man of god a businessman part of the many reasons why you are great is because your life is full of stories there are memories that connect you to several angles of people's pain so many times when people are shouting you say leave them and they say sir i i leave them should we command fire down and jesus said no do you not know what spirit you are of you know people who have grown because their lives are full of history god has brought them through seasons and they have been they have been in touch with several levels of pain disappointment shame they understand the nature of man nothing surprises them again hmm. are you learning so jesus is in heaven he's making intercession and the basis of his intercession is that as a high priest he even though 
he is the son of the living god he was subject to like passion he was hungry he was thirsty jesus tasted lack he was hungry and the bible did not hide it that he went to a tree hoping to get food is it in your bible and that he did not get the food he did not just say tree i love you he expressed his frustration in the presence of tiredness so when he sees weariness on earth he can connect to it the preacher is not a bad man he's just weary five years without results that human nature is crying and that becomes the basis of his compassion his intercession when listen there is a way you become too innocent you cannot really administer mercy because you have been shielded from too many things in life so it is difficult for you to connect with people's pain and tears why is the preacher shouting like that what is there in persecution you say what is there in losing in this business you just lost one billion so what just pray and god will help you when you see great people keep quiet is proof of growth they, there are stories in their lives that can connect to the pain of the people they are ministering to let me tell you this if you study the dynamics of the anointing you find out that your pain is a gift because that becomes the door do you know why jesus in heaven today still has the scars on his hand you would think one who resurrected by the power of the spirit all those scars should heal that scar that was a symbol of shame today is the basis of his honor every time he looks at those hands they remind him of his, of his compassion the frailty of man so he deals with us from the lens of his compassion but thou O oh lord are a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. You see, when I pray for the sick and I minister, I don't just minister because the Bible says to do it. I have been sick before. Really, really sick. I've been diagnosed with conditions that were not good and the lord preserve the pain of that experience and that becomes the sponsor and the trigger to the anointing when i see someone going through pain today it is not just because the bible says to heal and to pray for the person there is there is i have i have in the archives of my life there is there is the gift of pain that was taught and it today becomes the basis it sponsors patience it sponsors forbearance when you see people who do not show mercy in our life in our world today there are only two explanations number one they are children or number two they have not really faced the reality of life you see that the older people are even those who were temperous when they were young something happens to them they become like children again because 50 years of living in this wicked world should teach you a lesson whether you are ready to learn or not it teaches you so many things so when they brought the woman who was caught in adultery in the very act the bible says interesting that they didn't bring the man you don't commit adultery with yourself and yet they spared the man and dragged the woman threw her before Jesus and said this woman was caught in the very act what do you say if you come as a prophet you cannot fight other prophets before you so let's hear what you will say and Jesus was writing on the ground and here's what he said he didn't say I am Jesus he didn't say leave me alone he said he among all of you who are standing here based on the nature of man he who does not have sin stone her and the bible says they were convicted from the oldest next verse from the who they were convicted by their own conscience one by one beginning from the one who had lived longest on earth he had more stories and he reminded him 
Mr. Man, you've lived long in this earth. Are you saying you've lived so long and you've not become wise by reason of experience? Rabbi, are you that innocent? And the Bible says one by one. That one statement was a message reminding all of them of their desperate need for mercy. And the Bible says on the basis of that, they left. And he said, woman, where are your accusers? Where are they? One revelation drove them away. So one of the ways to drive accusers is to remind them that every time you point fingers at people, it lets you know that based on the standpoint of man, unassisted by God, nobody has the moral credence. Nobody has the moral credence to point an accusing finger against any. Woman, where are thine accusers? And he said, go, sin no more. And the woman left. She left justified. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development Lord grant me the discipline